premise behind um, functional range release actually stemmed from um, the misconceptions behind stretching um, that I've, I've heard at, at various uh, FAP seminars that, that, I, that uh, we've taught at. Uh, I began to lecture on the topic of stretching and these mis misconceptions uh, and then from those uh, misconceptions uh, coupled with the research uh, surrounding stretching is how uh, we really developed uh, um, uh, functional range release. Uh, the main misconception being that when you get to the end range of motion uh, during a stretch that that is in fact the, the terminal range or the end range of the muscle length. Um, so what people tend to do is they tend to get into that range of motion uh, and then when they can't go any further they, they tend to hold that stretch uh, for you know periods of, of 30 seconds or less in hopes of, of increasing flexibility and, the, and the, the fact of the matter is that that number one won't increase flexibility and number two uh, you're not even training your end range of motion. Uh, that fact can be demonstrated by a simple, um, simple experiment once you're in your end range of motion if you do a simple uh, PNF contraction or a post asymmetric relaxation uh, type maneuver, right away you get an increased range of motion. Now, just from doing a six to ten second contraction uh, with the PNF type PNF sorry type maneuver, you're not really changing uh, the structure of the muscle. You're not making the muscle longer. All you're doing is you're you're decreasing the gamma motor tone, uh, and by decreasing the gamma motor tone, you're decreasing the sensitivity of the spindle. Uh, and you're convincing the nervous system or, or tricking the nervous system into allowing you to achieve that greater range of motion. So the range of motion is not a mechanical increase in, in muscle length, it's rather uh, a neurological allowance for you to obtain that range of motion. Um, and the example that I often give is even people who are, are relatively inflexible, if I ask someone to uh, put your, your leg up at 90 degrees on top of a table, um, and they can do it, most people can, and then I say, okay, put that leg down, now put your other leg up on a table, and they can do that as well. Uh, so then I, I pose the question, why is it that you can't do the splits if you're able to achieve 90 degrees on both hips? Um, and, you know, the, the, the thing of it is, is that your gracilis, your adductors, don't achieve any greater length when doing the splits as when doing the, the simple uh, leg up on the table. Um, the, the problem is, is that your nervous system will not allow you to do it at the same time because it doesn't believe that you have the functional capacity to come out of that stretch or the strength or the control with which to control that stretch um, so it doesn't allow you to get there because your gamma motor tone is set at, at, a, at, a, at a certain level um, or your stretch reflex uh, threshold is set at a certain level and that level is too high um, for its purpose, which is to protect you. Obviously, when you do a simple contraction, your tissues can go longer and they're not tearing, um, but your, your, your body or your nervous system doesn't, doesn't allow you to get into that range of motion. Um, so I, I was teaching those concepts and, and the misconceptions with regards to stretching, and then uh, we started to think about what it is that we're actually doing when we're doing a soft tissue pass. We're, we're taking uh, let's say we're doing a myofascial release, um, we're taking a tissue from a shortened position, applying pressure and then putting it into a lengthened position for a very brief period of time. Um, and, and the question is, are, are we actually causing any uh, sustainable changes uh, or plastic deformation in the tissue? Um, that was one question. The second question was, if we're releasing a tissue through a certain range of motion, uh, similar to the, to the stretch, um, if we're not at that tissue's end range or we're really releasing the full amount of fascial uh, contraction or fascial tension with that simple range of motion. Um, and in my opinion, the answer was no, uh, which is one of the driving forces between uh, behind functional range release uh, technique. Um, the other, I guess you can say, basically is the... the, the uh, the approach that most soft tissue practitioners take to treating, which is uh, muscle focus. We're going to treat the muscle, we're going to lengthen the muscle or shorten the muscle, um, or, or that our, our, our treatment is somehow changing the muscle structure. Now, when you think about it, uh, a muscle is simply uh, contractile proteins bonded together, so actin and myosin and, and other proteins bonded together, 
and then those proteins are then wrapped in connective tissue and fascia, which then make bundles, which then make larger bundles, which are wrapped in epimecium, and, and then those epimecial bundles are attached to other epimecial bundles, so you have this large fascial network. Um, so when we're doing a soft tissue pass, are we actually ripping apart the actin and myosin uh, bonds? Um, is that the, the intent? No, the intent is to break down quote unquote scar tissue or uh, more accurately fascial contraction. Um, and so the, the, the premise behind a functional range release is that the muscle is not actually the tissue that you're most concerned of. It's not the tissue blocking uh, your range of motion. The tissue that is restricting someone from getting into a functional range of motion uh, is, is the fascia and that's where most of the newer research uh, is going to or going towards. Um, yeah, so functional range release is a it's a, it's a new soft tissue uh, treatment system that incorporates all of these ideas um, that targets uh, fascial structure um, as, it, uh, as it influences or as it affects uh, the nervous system, as it affects the muscles, as it affects uh, the biomechanics or, or, uh, of movement. Um, so the, the treatment itself um, targets all of those factors that, that I just discussed, plus it incorporates the idea of fascial conditioning and that's when um, we get into the idea of PALES. Uh, which stands for progressive angular isometric loading. So now, not only are we temporarily um, causing increases in, in this functional range of motion, uh, but with the use of pails, we're going to train the system um, uh, to actually incorporate these new ranges of motion into actual you know, movement, functional movement. Getting back to stretching, the idea uh, with stretching is, is that you're you're getting, you're achieving this new range of motion, but as the research shows, it's very temporary. It goes back to, to the way it was before, uh, you know, within minutes after the stretch is completed. And the reason is because you've never actually uh, taken that new range of motion and and, and taught the, the nervous system how to control it, or you never um, um, strengthen the 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 tissue that you're stretching in that new range. Once you are able to do that, once you are able to strengthen the tissue in that newly acquired range of motion, that's when that motion will become functional. Uh, there's a lot of people out here, out there who are very flexible. They can achieve uh, a range of motion um, when they're statically stretching uh, with, with given the, amount, the right amount of time um, to warm up, etc. But that particular range of motion will not be in uh, incorporated into their, their functional ranges of movement, so it won't be incorporated into their athletic movements or reaction movements, uh, simply because uh, the tissue hasn't been taught how to function in that newly acquired range. Um, so there's a lot of people who have uh, what I term useless flexibility, which is uh, the ability to get to a, a certain angle, but uh, not be able to use that new angle in their everyday life or air in their sports, uh, for example. So the combination of functional range relief, soft tissue, functional range release, sorry, soft tissue therapy, with the the progressive angular isometric loading, um, which is the rehabilitative part of the fascia, um, we're going to uh, not only treat the tissues, but then condition the treat the, the tissues to acquire greater ranges of motion more freely. Um, and in doing so, we're going to um, uh, number one, release tissue tension, which is you know one of the, the major causes of uh, of soft tissue conditions and soft tissue pain. Um, but we're also going we're also going to improve that person's uh, functional ability functional ability um, with regards to freedom of motion, uh, or improve that that athlete's agility by incorporating these new ranges.